the sleek shape of Launcher One, the rocket it was hoped would boost Britain into the ranks of spacefaring nations. Cosmic Girl is now on the runway, taking off. But what's happened on past launches in America didn't happen this Brilliant. time. It looks to be a successful ignition. The rocket hit 11,000 miles per hour, but then its boosters misfired and it crashed back to Earth. The company's share price and Britain's space ambitions plummeting with it. By morning, at a windswept Cornish launch site, the boss of Britain's space agency was still reaching for the stars. The real achievements are not the successes that people see, it's the hurdles that as a team you can cross. We will get there, we will absolutely get there. But getting there has been a decades-long work in progress. A plan to repurpose Blue Streak, a 1950s military missile, as Britain's first launch vehicle, was shelved in the early 1970s. Black Arrow, the only British rocket to put a satellite into space, did so this same year, but from Australia. And while Helen Sharman and Tim Peake became the first Miles Brits in, in space, they left Earth from foreign soil. Welcome back as we see Cosmic Girl touching down back to UK spaceport Cornwall. But Britain's space industry remains undaunted. And others will be eyeing the prize spaceport Cornwall couldn't quite deliver. Vertical launches are being planned from sites in Scotland and a thriving UK satellite industry worth £16 billion a year is demanding domestic launch sites. So while it's not to infinity and beyond quite yet, when not if might be the motto Britain's space pioneers will settle on for now. Well, I'm joined now in the studio by Dr Anna Hogg, founder of Space Hub Yorkshire, which champions the space industry across the county. Thank you so much for coming in. You were watching the launch on your phone last night. What was going through your mind? Well, I think my mind was in the same place as everyone else watching the launch, was that we were so supportive of the activities going on down in Cornwall and we were just willing the launch to be a success. Um, although the satellites weren't placed in orbit, there's many milestones that we passed um, that I think are um, something we can celebrate here in the UK. Mm. It's fantastic to see this new facility built down in Cornwall, and there are many others across the UK, up in Sutherland and also in Shetlands. Um, and we've now got um, a rocket that was launched into space, although not quite into orbit, and so there's lots of um, mm. hope for the future launches from this site. I mean, you're being quite positive there, but how significant a setback is this? Well, launching rockets is really hard. Mm. Um, we've seen that in Hollywood movies, and, and it turns out that's the, the truth in real life too. Um, but the UK is a world leader in space technology, and we've shown that through our ability to manufacture small satellites, which we do fantastically, um, to make coatings and materials like in Huddersfield and Sheffield, um, and also to, to process these vast volumes of data that are collected from um, satellites now. And we use that to monitor change all over Earth, and that's so important for the fight against climate change. So there's lots of things to celebrate, um, and the UK remains a world leader in space. Mm. You've been down there to this facility in Cornwall. Do you expect the next rocket launch to come from there or is it going to be another site maybe in Scotland or elsewhere competing to, to, to sort of go further? I think we've got a space race in the UK that's going to be really exciting to follow. So um, internally as well as internally, against Internally, yes, and globally as well. And so it will be great to see um, whether in, in Cornwall they've said that they will be launching again within the year um, from the UK and that site. Um, but equally, we're building the facility up in Scotland rapidly as well. And so it'll be really nice to see what comes next. I'll be watching. And there was this idea sort of after Brexit that the UK would be going alone with the space race, that there wouldn't be as much contribution to European space programmes. Do you think this, what happened here is really going to affect that? You know, science is a team sport and, and so is um, space um, technology and exploration. Um, the UK has really benefited from our involvement in the European Space Agency, which we still remain a, an important member of despite Brexit. And so what we need to do in the UK is to fund our investment in these large international programmes, collaborating with colleagues and friends around the world, but also investing in our national space programme to build core capability here that will help us on, on the next steps. We know that for every one pound spent on space in the UK, we get a return on that investment of about three to four pounds. So this is a great deal. It's our, our Willy Wonka gold ticket and the UK should invest more in space. You're very excited about this new era of space and, and many space enthusiasts and ex experts will be. But there, there are costs to this, aren't there? I mean, I know that you sit on many panels looking at the impact of climate change. Is firing up rockets like this in the atmosphere a good thing when it comes to climate change? 
Yeah, I think that's a great question. You know, there is obviously an environmental cost to launching rockets, but what I think about um, as an environmental scientist is what the alternative would be. So if we were to launch lots of planes or fly people around the world to try and collect the same volume of measurements um, on the ground, it would be infinitely more costly in terms of the amount of money. It would be logistically impossible in terms of getting everyone to monitor these things every day um, around the world. And so what we need is satellites that are the real workhorses up in space collecting data on um, the biomass in our forests, the ocean colour um, around the world, and then even the, the polar ice caps in Antarctica and Greenland. Very quickly, just tell me, what is the next thing we should be looking out for? Um, the next thing we should be looking out for is um, the next generation of satellite instruments that we will launch um, through our involvement in the European Copernicus um, satellite programme. And where is that going to be happening? It's going to be happening all across uh, Europe and the world. Um, okay. so. Right, Dr Anna Hud, thank you very much.